For some reason, my camera just decided to shut itself off for absolutely no reason. I think I just succeeded at crashing a video camera. Anyway, you haven't seen Boo this year so far. Boo is very happy to see food, let's be honest here. Turn on the light. Meow. Mmm, I see you just used litter box. I will not be filming that. There you go, Boo Kitty. Aww. You'll see more of Boo tomorrow. Bye, Boo. I must. And, oops, got to turn off the light. Also, white balance is off now. This room is not actually blue, believe it or not. Last but most certainly not least is to Isin Kitai. Oof, your water fountain does not sound very good. I need to refill it. Let's refill the water fountain while I talk. Because you're seeing a kind of boring sight right now. I will try to focus it more on the kitties. So. Meryl. Meryl. So, um, I just got done role-playing. There we go, now the white balance is correct. I just got done role-playing for the night. Which is the reason why I'm feeding kitties and then trying to go to bed. Uh, I did manage to get yesterday's video up last night. There's no way in heck I'm going to get today's video up. That's fine. The important part is recording the video, not... Ooh, that is really low. Um, the important part is recording it, not uploading it. I'm going to switch hands really fast so I can record myself. Hi! So, yeah, I know, there's not going to be good lighting for a bit. I'm trying to do this with lights off. This, this bathroom isn't mine, technically. I mean, technically it is because I own the house, but it's my house, my bathroom. So, not mine to record in my mind. So. Um, just finished role-playing. Want to talk a bit about my character, because I don't really have much time to prep anything. I'm not even probably going to bother editing this video, to be honest. So. I am playing a character named Endeal. I would put a picture up, but I don't have a picture I'm allowed to use. I ended up just grabbing a photo online, and I'm using that temporarily until I can get a commission of my character. I like getting commissions of characters, especially the ones that are more visibly vibrant than normal. Um, maybe I will end up editing these together after all, because I think I need to take a short break. Yep, I'll be right back. So she was married off to her childhood friend. Uh, it was not a marriage for love. It was th This was definitely a familial marriage for, hey, look, we'll have our descendants together and we'll jointly own... Oh. I have got to find a better place to record these videos. I keep hitting shadows. Um, so she was married for business. And she was married to her best friend. Uh, both her and her best friend have lovers on the side. Uh, nobody serious at the moment, but that's the way things were. Uh, Emil was a uh, jeweler. Her specialty was jewelry. Her wife's specialty was uh, silver working. So basically together they'd be able to make rings and pendants and stuff like that. Uh, neither one of them are really familiar with magic or anything. They're just making pretty things. If wizards want to enchant it, that's fine, but they're going to concentrate on the pretty. So they had just opened their business together and were going to a tavern for a special night of drinks. And the tavern keeper offered her, my character, a special drink. She accepted, and that's the last thing she remembers. At least up until the start of the campaign. Um, she actually didn't remember that much. She's only recently started recovering that part of her memory. When she woke up, um, basically face-planted, naked, on top of a bar in the middle of who knows where, 
not understanding a single lick of common because she was raised as an elf, typical elven village. Hold on, I need to rescue Zone. Zone's dive bombing clothing again. He's stolen stuff out of my laundry basket specifically so he can dive bomb things. Look at how fluffy that tail is. It's just made of fluff. You wonder why my videos get so long. I get so distracted from the kitties. Also, boop. He's very riled up right now. You can tell from his crazy eyes. Anyway, so my character woke up buck naked in the middle of a tavern, not able to understand the common language of the land, not knowing where she was, or as she's now starting to think, when she was. Um, she has no memory of the events that happened in between, and she's apparently woken up with some very strange powers. So, my character is a... Stupid Shadows! Uh, That'll work. My character is a 5th edition D&D character. I am specifically playing a warlock. Where did I put oh, There's my can of Clairbrun. Um, I am playing a 5th edition warlock. I just finished leveling up to level 5. In her mind, it has been three days since she woke up. This has been the most exciting three days of her life. She didn't know anything about magic. She still doesn't know anything about magic, may I note. Magic is brand new to her. She has no knowledge of magic whatsoever. It's been hilarious. All she knows is that she's generally a good person at heart, and it seemed like people wanted to help her, and she wanted to help other people. She fully believes in the kindness of strangers and the betterment of everybody in her heart, and... Yeah, she has eight wisdom. She's not the smartest person on the planet. Uh, but she's incredibly charismatic and very, very, very stubborn about her ways. So I had come up with this character idea. And it was stuck in my head for weeks before my friend had said that she was ready to uh, DM a game. And the character concept is basically exactly what I had said, even in the original version. I didn't hammer down things like that she was a gem maker, or that she was a jeweler, or anything like that. But the idea was that the character was somebody who had a life, something happened, she doesn't know what happened, and she wakes up with a completely different set of powers, someplace very far away from her home. I don't even know what happens in between. I intentionally asked my DM ahead of time if it was okay if I created a character where I intentionally left a giant gaping hole in her backstory. She knows who she was. Um, she knew her name. She's mostly recovered her memory at this point of what her life was like before the Drink of Doom. And now she's a warlock. And um, there's actually another warlock in the party, which I'll explain in a moment, because that's a very strange coincidence, um, who's informed her of how warlocks worked and the fact that you had to sign a pact. She has no idea who she made a deal with. Or how she made a deal, or anything like that. And that's a good chunk of her character. Her powers indicate that it's probably a celestial, probably somebody good, but that doesn't mean that they're not lying. It could... and. I mechanically made the character use as a Celestial Warlock. Celestial is a uh, Warlock patron source from the Xanathar's Guide to Everything, for reference for those of you that play D&D. Anyway, um, think of, for those of you that don't play D&D, think of Warlocks as somebody who made a deal with the devil. That's the stereotypical Warlock of you have a pact with a devil, you call upon their powers to do things. That's what a warlock does, typically. There's a couple of other typical pact patrons, like, for instance, you can call upon the powers of the Arkfey, um, typically, like, Titania or Oberon, or one of the stereotypical fey in various mythologies, or you can call upon the power of the Great Old Ones. Think Cthulhu. So, she, in theory, is calling upon the powers of somebody who's a great good, but in practice, you know... Tricksters can all totally pretend to be somebody who's a great good, or devils who are trying to corrupt people might be pretending to be a great good. There's 
She has no idea who she made a bargain with, and I also don't know. I intentionally kept that to my DM. And again, I asked all of this in advance, because this is potentially a lot of work for her. But she seemed to be fairly excited about being able to DM for me like this. So, I am in a in an interesting party, to put it mildly. Um, it's a five-person party. One person is the odd one out. That would be my friend Brandy's character. Brandy may, in fact, be watching this video. Hi, Brandy. Um, she's playing a dwarven druid. Kind of gruff, not very huge amount of her person er, of the druid's personality yet. Druid's a he, player's a she. Um, we haven't seen much of his personality yet, but my character doesn't share a language in common with him right now, so don't really know him very well, other than he's a perv. He pretended to be a cat for a while and didn't realize that my character was capable of catching him. So it was quite a funny experience in the beginning. Um, and the rest of us, my character included, all ended up choosing what we refer to as Lisa characters. Lisa is the DM in this case, and when she's a player, she's notorious for playing rogue-like characters, usually rogues or bards, with high dexterity, high charisma, and extremely low wisdom. Uh, the type of wisdom where you might get lost in a barrel. All of us made Lisa characters this time. Uh, the highest wisdom in the group beyond the druid is 10. 10, for those of you that don't play D&D, is average human. Everybody else in the group has below average wisdom for a human, normal everyday human. Conversely, there are two members of the group, or the, there's one member of the group with a below average charisma, one member of the group with a decently above average charisma, and three members of the group that have maximum charisma. Once more, we all made Lisa characters. We all have high charisma, high dexterity, low wisdom characters. So, the next person, member of the party, um, that would be the party rogue. This rogue is a swashbuckler. So, in 5th ed D&D terms, what that means is that you're, think pirate. Um, you're good at fighting in melee combat. You're not necessarily skulking around so much as you're stabbing people in the face during duels. That's kind of what a swashbuckler ends up doing. They still have the ability to lockpick things and find traps and stuff like that, but they're more of a fighter-like. Uh, we have the paladin. <laughs> so this campaign setting has been kind of screwed up by players like me. I'm definitely one of the players that screwed this up. And in fact, my character Valen, which I've talked about in a previous video, Maybe I'll link to it, maybe I won't. Um, Valen's a deity in this campaign setting. And this paladin is a paladin of Valen. Valen being an extremely chaotic neutral character, and an extremely chaotic deity at this point. Um, Valen... Paladins of Valen are... Well... They're not a typical D&D &D paladin. They are... Paladins of freedom. They are paladins of social unrest. They are effectively libertarian paladins. It's a very weird combination of things, but long story short, they believe in making sure to correct injustices, making sure that anybody who is in power does not abuse said power, otherwise they will kill your ass dead. Um, that's kind of the shtick behind Valen Paladins, is that none shall bind me, and none shall bind anybody else. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're good. So, for an example, sell your soul to the devil, and Valen and Pal will be like, Sweet! You shouldn't have sold your soul. Devil instead tries to take over a country and starts, um, inflicting some unjust laws. That's when the Paladin of Valen's going to go, mm, no punch. Um, then there are the final two characters who, in a pure coincidence, because I kept my character a secret because, well, I didn't even know most of the details of my character. Um, one of my friends, Seth, he decided to keep his character a secret just kind of spite me. And uh, the little bits of his character had leaked out and going, this sounds a lot like 
my character, Seth, you're not, are, are you sure you're not playing the same character? It's like, no, no, there's no way you're playing a character like this. I'm playing something very different. Um, I asked the DM, hey, Lisa, is Seth playing the same character I am? No, no, they're, you're playing a different character. After the first adventure, we figure out, no, no, we're actually playing the same class of character, Warlock, and the same type of Warlock. We're both playing Celestial Warlocks. The main difference is Seth's character is human and is a Pact of the Sword. So they summon a blade from their pact. Their blade is their contract, effectively, with the Celestial that they made a pact with. Whereas my character is a um, Pact of the Tome. I have a spell book, and that book contains my pact. The book is the representation of my contract. And Seth's character is human, and my character is an Asmar, even though she totally remembers herself being an elf. Anyway, um, as a result, and luckily both of us are fairly good when it comes to role playing, and we don't try to step on each other's toes. We're actually different mechanically in some ways. Um, Stats-wise, we're practically identical to each other, with very similar everything taken. But personality-wise, we're completely different. We're playing off of each other. None of us, uh, neither one of us, are actually getting into each other's skin or anything like that. I'm playing this more as she's my mentor, and she's only like months old at this. My character's days old at this, so you know, always interesting. <sighs> um. What else about her? So, I mentioned that um, my character is into women. That part has not been shown yet in the campaign, which has been hilarious, because my character has absolutely no compulsion against being naked with everybody, and is weirdly constantly in situations where that keeps happening. Uh, the last adventure that we had, we got attacked by assassins overnight. My character doesn't wear clothes at night. It's not comfortable, so she was fully fighting assassins naked. Luckily, she has the ability to use Disguise Self, which is an illusion on yourself, which includes your clothes. So when she went running after the assassin, she was totally wearing something. It was an illusion, but counts. It's fine. So... Yeah, I like making characters that are a little more unusual. Yes, I could have just phrased things as, yeah, I'm playing a warlock. I have a celestial warlock, so I have the ability to do a little bit of healing. Yes, kitten. I have the ability to do a little bit of healing, but mostly I just blast people out of the sky. Oops. I'm trying to close the blind. I need to go... Cat. He constantly does this. He really does not like these blinds closed. He's even... You can sort of see the divot here. He actually snapped the piece of plastic that goes on the rolling shade in half. Um, so, I can make a character like that. Uh, the kind of the skeletal structure of the character is boring. The more important part is what I do with the character. The backstory, the descriptions. I have a full description of this character. She fully believes that she is an elf. That is what she remembers herself being, and it bothers her that her ears are not quite right. Her ears look weird to her. And I even have theories as to what might have happened to her during that gap. I, mean, I intentionally haven't told my DM the theories because I don't want to um, try to make it true. Um, I actually think that my character is a Nine Harrier, so um, think uh, Spirit of the Dead sent by Valkyries. Uh, basically, my character is probably from ages in the past, has nothing to do with the current timeline whatsoever, and is sent into the present because she's needed. So she remembers what she was like in her life. What she doesn't know is that her life has been over for hundreds of years. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to find positions where the light isn't terrible. I will get better at this. Lighting is my weakness when it comes to these vlogs. Um, so yeah. That's kind of my character. I have a full character description. I might put it in the description of this video. I'm tired and don't particularly... I don't have my character sheet in front of me or anything, so I can't just read it off, but... Um, think purple hair, purple eyes, and... 
when she actually uses her SMR abilities, instead of her eye being relatively normal, elven-like eyes just happen to be violet, the entire eye goes violet. There's no whites in the eyes, there's no pupil, just solid violet. And she gets very, very angry if you do things like, say, for instance, attack children, which has happened already. <sighs> Anyway, I've just been talking about my character for who knows how long because I don't actually have a recording timer on this. I'll stop now. Not too many people are going to be interested in this, so... Um, there was a question asked of me of what types of characters do I like to play. So I'm going to ask you all the same type of thing. If you are a role player, it doesn't matter if you play D&D or uh, LARPs or forum RPGs or anything like that, what type of character do you like to play? I'm going to answer that in a later video, probably Friday's video, because I need something quick. Let me know. I'll talk to you later, internet. Bye!